This audio talk is titled, Choiceless Awareness, Still Water Flows. In keeping with this title, I want to start this talk by quoting Ajahn Chah, one of the great Dharma teachers that has come out of the Thai forest tradition. And Ajahn Chah says, Stillness is tranquility, and flowing is wisdom. We practice meditation to make the mind calm like still water. Then it can flow. I love this quote, and there is such beautiful imagery within it. He also calls on us to look deeply at how it is that still water can flow and how flowing water can have a stillness. And like most aspects of meditation, this quote is best understood within the meditative experience, not through the intellect. So I'll shift from directly talking about this quote, and perhaps by the end of this talk, or maybe by the end of the eight-week course, we will revisit it with a sense of knowing that will be born out of your own experience of practice. For the past two weeks, you've been practicing concentration meditation to develop the stability of your minds. You've set your timer for 30 minutes or thereabouts. You've taken your seat and found your breath. And with each breath, you've made an earnest attempt to receive it in whatever form it appears. In addition, during your meditation, I imagine that you have been in intimate contact with what is affectionately known as monkey mind. Each time you've come into a meditative posture and settled into your breath, the wildness of the mind has probably appeared. You've discovered how planning, worrying, regretting, fantasizing, hoping, grasping, and more planning have created barriers to connecting with the breath. You have most likely had thoughts like, my God, my mind is crazy. Perhaps you've gotten frustrated or carried away by restlessness. But through all of this, I suspect you have stayed on your cushion or in your seat, watching and sometimes participating in and then watching again this unfolding mental landscape. And although this perhaps feels like the furthest thing from a stable mind, you might have begun to notice that in fact there is more stability. You may be discovering that as you move through the day, the mind is just a slight bit less indecisive. Perhaps you've noticed that something that would usually ignite reactivity is not producing any particular intense feeling state. Perhaps you are finding that when you are walking, you are just walking. Perhaps you've noticed that when you are listening, you are really listening. And although you know that each meditation is different, just like each moment in life is different, as you continue your concentration meditation practice, perhaps you begin to notice more and more stability. And as you begin to notice the stability, you also might begin to get in touch with the inner experience of tranquility. The energy of a stabilized mind is most often experienced as a sense of tranquility or inner calmness. The stability of the mind with its tranquil energy is often like the stillness of water. And this tranquility is the condition needed in order for the wisdom born of mindfulness meditation to arise. But what concentration meditation does not provide is insight or perspective on life or even the idea of self. It won't shed light on the nature of suffering or how we transcend suffering. Nor will it really help us identify when ego begins to rear its head. For these and other insights, we need the assistance of mindfulness. So let's take a moment here and really get clear about what we're talking about when we talk about mindfulness meditation. 
And another word for mindfulness meditation that I'm using is choiceless awareness. Mindfulness is about learning how to pay attention in a certain way. It begins with being aware of what is present within our own mind. So we might notice that anger is arising or that the desire for something is arising. We may become aware at any moment that we are running through a to-do list in our minds. This step is the beginning of mindfulness, but we can actually notice these things without being particularly mindful. Mindful awareness has the additional quality of also being aware of what filter or lens is operating underneath the experiences themselves. For example, while sitting in meditation, I might become aware of planning a conversation with my spouse in my mind. But I can also be aware of the lens, the lens of right and wrong, and my desire to be right. There are many lens that can be in operation, such as I like this, I don't like this, and mindfulness can be with all of this. So let's now come full circle back to where we began in this audio talk, to still water flowing. As we practice concentration meditation, we cultivate this stillness from which our awareness can flow, from which life can flow. We can sit and become aware of all the various activity of this moment we can actually cultivate the ability to become part of the flow. So as we move into practicing choiceless awareness, I'm going to invite you to begin to bring this type of mindful attention within your practice as well as within your everyday experience. This noticing what's present, what's here right now, and in addition, what filter is in operation? How am I seeing this? Thank you.